Well, in these hectic times, I'm sure you haven't forgotten that Christmas is just around the corner. However, I think that all the tills in the towns of the country are certainly not going to ring quite and jingle quite as merrily as they have in the past. And that's understandable, because even the banked salaries of workers, and those be the higher paid workers, have actually diminished in terms of real value. At the same time, we also have the ongoing economic crisis. But the festivities will go on, I'm sure, and we'll fill our shopping baskets with whatever we can afford. But the goods in those baskets, I think, are going to reveal, if we look at them closely, an indication of what is really the global problem, the race to the bottom that is ongoing at the moment and is resulting in so many losses of jobs and so much difficulty for ordinary people. It comes about because of pressure from international corporations and from the supermarket chains who continue to demand lower and lower prices from producers, whether they be manufacturers or farmers or whatever. They want cut prices. They want production prices cut down. And the related issue is something that came up again in recent weeks, and that is the whole question of the exploitation of children, of child labor. The, I don't know, don't know if you're aware, but the Stats South Africa official statistic for 2015, that's the latest one we have, is that there are 550,000 child laborers in South Africa. However, that's 200,000 less than there were two, uh, five years ago. Does that mean that we're winning the battle against child labor? Not at all. This is a global problem and I fear that it is growing and it will continue to grow. India, for example, classic example, now has an estimated more than 13 million child laborers, most of them between the ages of 7 and 14, often working in the most horrendous conditions. But it's not just the corporations and the supermarket chains with their value chains where they take the bulk of the uh, sale price of anything. And, and this applies, for example, with wine, where in Sweden the state uh, monopoly takes 64% of the sale price in taxes. The people on the ground here get 5% percent of that actual sale price. But governments are also complicit because if you have a look, go into your supermarket and just look at the shelves. Look at where the products come from, products that can be made here, grown here, canned tomatoes, beans, that sort of thing, asparagus, you name it, chicken. We, we've had a lot of publicity about that dumping of chicken. That's because of subsidies. Well, our government also here in South Africa gives assistance to certain manufacturers, etc. It's very interesting to look at the figures. The aluminium smelters in Richards Bay, for example, it's estimated that for every one worker there, every one job, there's one million rand per annum per worker in assistance. In the motor industry, it's at least 50,000 rand. Yet in agriculture, which is the most labor intensive sector of our society, if we take, we don't even have to take out the land reform money, which does not actually help in job creation or agriculture, if we leave that in, it's still less than 3,000 rand. And this is something that I think is incredibly worrying. And I'm going to try and present this overall picture because we shouldn't just concentrate on one aspect. We should look at this thing holistically. Anyhow, that's what I'll try to do in my Inside Labour column, which you can access this week on this platform, Fin24, tomorrow and a version of which will appear in the City Press business section on Sunday. Until then, it's over to you. Comments, criticisms, suggestions, anything you like, to editor at fin24.com. That's editor at fin24.com. And for this week, that's all from me. Cheers.